Kentucky kicks ass. All right, we got that new marketing ad campaign the state does. We're sitting there talking about all the unique things and how great Kentucky is. They've quoted Happy Chandler a bunch of times. Happy Chandler, he, of course, he's the one that said that Zimbabwe has gone all nigger now during the Nelson Mandela days. And, um, you know, that's uh, Kentucky kicks ass, right? So, I don't know. I like being positive about things, but I also like the truth. So, I feel like you got to, people got to understand Kentucky where it is. Um, so, we can point out all the positive benefits and just be proud of ourselves, which is totally consistent in the mind of a backwards fucking, you know, a white supremacist. Basically, they don't do anything. They've completed nothing, but they just want to be proud of something that they didn't even do, right? So, um, so let's, let's review Kentucky, okay? So, who is Kentucky? We got two senators, two Republican senators. Now, the state didn't vote for Obama two uh, times in a row because there's a lot of racism here, tons of racism. Uh, they voted for Hillary Clinton over Obama, and then they voted for uh, John McCain over Obama. Also, the first state to vote for, um, the, you know, whoever, the uh, Mitt, Mitt Romney, right? And there's only about six of the 120 counties that voted for Obama. UK had a big effigy. You know about this. It's all history. Um, but Mitch McConnell is our senator. Mitch McConnell, he ain't going to win. This is the last, this is the end of the run for Mitch McConnell, right? Uh, Matt Bevin isn't going to run to the left of him or to the right of him. He's going to run right over him. And uh, when we look at the numbers of Mitch McConnell, especially with this new poll that just came out, it shows that his internals are really bad. He's 52% uh, of the most of, of likely voters in Kentucky uh, view him unfavorably, so they hate him. They don't like him. He's a polarizing figure, just like Hillary Clinton. And so, you know, you have a large, substantial population lover and love substantial population that hate her. Same thing with uh, Mitch McConnell. And the people that hate him aren't just likely voters or his base or whatever, but it's also the un, uh, the undecided. So the independent vote, he's not winning any of it either. 77% of undecided voters rate uh, undecided voters rate his job performance negatively, and only 6% of undecided voters believe he deserves re-election. Only 6%. So 77% of the poll of people that he's going to have to get to get on his side is you know overwhelmingly against him. He has these poll numbers. Polls are right, man. I've been predicting so many elections so many times because these polls come out pretty accurate. They they go through, you know, they have a, a methodology. They go through a whole process, gather a whole be bunch of uh, random people's uh, data, and then they come up with, you know, um, and so it's accurate. Yeah, Miss McConnell has no chance at all. Sometimes I'm wondering, like, well, he's going to try to ride the Tea Party tails all the way to fucking, um, you know, to victory. But Jesse Bitten, his own campaign manager, says he's holding his nose. He thinks that Rand Paul will have a better chance at getting elected by the Republican establishment if they could just be around Mitch, help him to get elected, even if they lose. So he's holding his nose while he's doing that because he believes that it increases his uh, Rand Paul's presidential chances. So that's what we're doing. We're, we're fucking watching Mitch McConnell take the Tea Party, the Tea Party campaign manager, the one who won uh, Rand Paul his seat. And he's hired him so he can, you know, invest and get some money for Mitch. And Mitch is a great conservative all of a sudden, right? He's got the Tea Party. All you got to do is throw a little bit of money at the Tea Party, and they'll just become fucking conservatives right off the bat. Um, so what I'm thinking is, like, is it possible for Mitch to, you know, just come by in the last fucking week and barrage of negative ads? And um, and since he's got the Tea Party, maybe he'd be able to ride the Tea Party, maybe get uh, Ray and Paul, you know, speaking at some of his events and shit. And just double up, you know, against Allison Lundergan Grimes. I don't see it happen. I think Matt Bevin's going to fucking take a huge dent out of him. I think it's going to be pretty close the whole time. But I think Allison Lundergan Grimes, when she tries, when she gets out there, when she starts running these ads against Miss McConnell, we're going to see, you know, a big fucking change. And I would think, usually it's one week beforehand because, you know, American voters don't actually pay attention to this a year in advance. Only political pundits are paying attention to this. But you have... Um, Within a month or two months, I bet we'll start seeing just a barrage of fucking ass because she's got a huge war chest. A lot of people want to see Mitch, the bitch, be ditched. Um, the white supremacist fucking white power structure. He's one of the last bastions of, you know, the Bush era. And uh, he's been around for 30 years, so he took... <coughs> he took Walter, Walter D. Holston's seat. So for uh, 30 years, 30 years you've had Mitch McConnell, you know, in office since I've been two years old or three years old. 
took uh, Walter D. Huddleston's spots, basically been insulting Walter D. Huddleston. Once the Democrat lost his fucking seat, he ain't ever gained it back. The Democrats have never got Mitch McConnell's seat back. So at the very end of this, we have the bottom line. Mitch McConnell faces a precarious set of circumstances. One, he's got a weak job performance rating. Two, he's got a meager appetite for his re-election. There ain't, people ain't excited about, you know, fucking old turtle face. You know, old fucking piece of shit turtle face who's bought and owned by the Chinese government. He's the one who passed the big bank bailout. He's the one that um, uh, lied to us with Bush to get us into the Iraq war, just like Hillary Clinton did. And um, so... He's got, and that's just in this era. That's in the 2000s. He's been there for 30 years. So he's got the 90s and the 80s to answer for. So he was there bombing Nicaragua and bombing El Salvador. He was there, you know, uh, bailing out the savings and loan industry. So there's not an appetite for his reelection. Weak job performance. Nobody thinks he's doing a fucking good job. No capacity to generate any crossover appeal. Uh, the undecideds already hate him. The Democrats already hate him. Mitch McConnell does, has no chance whatsoever in Kentucky. Allison Lundergan Grimes is the is the, probably the lead candidate. I think she's winning. She came out pretty strong, and she's going to win. So I think that actually she won at Fancy Farm when she came out, and they was like, we ain't scared of you, Mitch. We see what you're doing. We see how you love to beat up on Ashley Judd and beat up on women. You all salivate at the opportunity to be able to, you know, disgrace a liberal female. But you've seen how the liberals have treated Sarah Palin. MSNBC's fired um, Brashear, um, uh, when he just said something about, like, you know, her making comments about slavery. So it's acceptable for Sarah Palin to, to compare some bullshit thing about slavery, right? It's okay for her to say that shit, but if somebody was to suggest that she should be part of slavery, then she would understand it, then that's wrong. MSNBC's, M MSNBC has got it all wrong. They also fired Sink Ugar, and they're not fucking liberal. They're the ones that got rid of, um, uh, 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 Phil Donahue, right, at the run-up to the Iraq war. They needed hawks. They needed people that was pro-country, pro-America, pro-Bush, right? Um, but right now, the Republicans are not pro-America. They're not pro-Obama. They're not pro... They want him to fail, right? And they want his liberal policies to fail when actually those are the, the few liberal policies we get are the best things about him. So, no capacity to generate crossover appeal. He's got a primary opponent... Um, on the right from a well-funded, he's well-funded, he's got Tea Party support, so Matt Bevin, he's going to have a fucking hard primary coming up in May, um, in five months, you got an undecided vote that appears openly hostile to him, so the, you know, no crossover appeal, the undecided, the independents, they hate him, just like the Democrats hate him, he, and uh, there's a formidable opponent with Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes, Allison Lundergan Grimes has already, um, she's Secretary of State right now, so she's you know got power. She's been showed that she can, she's electable individually. Any of these factors could imperil McConnell, but uh, combined, all five or six of these things: a formidable opponent, undecided vote that's hostile to him. Matt Bevin challenge you know the Tea Party uh, coming in the primary, no capacity to generate crossover appeal, weak job performance ratings, and a meager appetite for his reelection. He's not going to win. Mitch McConnell has no fucking chance of getting Kentucky Senate seat. He's going to have to go fucking vicious and dirty. And he's been shown that he can do it. He doesn't fucking mind about it, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's some bullshit. You know, it's some real major fucking bullshit. Essentially, my, I, think, I feel like my generation is a bunch of fucking losers. I grew up, in, you know, I graduated in 2000, and actually, I mean, I'll admit that I voted for George W. Bush to begin with. I was a young Republican. I was brainwashed by Republican Catholicism, and uh, it was all just about hierarchy, obedience, shut the fuck up, or we're going to smack you. That's what the Republican Party represents to me. That's what Catholicism represents to me. Um, uh, but essentially, it's able to, uh, since I disagree with them so much, I've been able to break away and, and form my own opinions. And, uh, and I can tell that my generations, you know, I remember in, being real young and having somebody, um, you know, as a woman or a girl I had a crush on, but she said, wouldn't it be cool if we was living in the 60s and we lived during the hippies? Yeah, that would be fucking cool, but you didn't really take that serious. That was just like, just kind of a dream you had for one day. Um, I think we have that opportunity right now. My generation, I think it's bigger because we're the baby boomers. 
Um, so I don't know. We had a '60s over 50 years ago. We could have got the '60s again, but we're we we never become hippies. We didn't even fucking try. The hippies lost. Okay, they ran back to the establishment. Nixon's the one that ended the war, and we didn't see the new country that they wanted to create. Um, they did give us a, a, a you know an idealistic perspective, a bunch of just peace and love and hippies just wanting to hang out and get along, right? That sounds like a nice fucking world. That sounds like a nice fucking place, but that that did not succeed. And so, uh, unlike them, though, you know, we could sit there and say, well, they never succeeded. Well, we never even tried. Our generation didn't even try. We didn't even say, you know, we, like, we didn't try. We didn't even fucking make the attempt. And so, it's clear we don't give a shit. Generation X, you know, Pepsi was calling us Generation Next, as in next. Let's get some folks with some fucking backbone, strong moral cord, who want change, justice, peace, solidarity, and global warming, economic inequality, police brutality, military industry, Pollution, etc., etc., etc. This is Kentucky, right? Kentucky kicks ass, and we kick ass when it comes to pollution, insanity, cancer, child abuse, animal abuse. We kick ass in child and accidents, and building prisons, and police brutality, beating people up who uh, supposedly are breaking the law, even though there's no victim, and you know there's there's uh, nobody's injured. There's no victim, and there's no injury. There's no nobody's injured or hurt except for the person doing it because. You know, they're there to protect and serve you, even to protect and serve you from yourself, which means if they're going to protect you from marijuana or hemp, which is currently legal in Kentucky, they will ruin your fucking life in order to do so, right? So don't even believe that they give a shit. It has nothing to do with it. It's big fucking brother. It's um just the, uh, you know, it's um the... Uh, <laughs> The surveillance state, it's, it's 1984, you know, all over the world, all over the place. So, you know, what they didn't want to find out. We didn't, we're the biggest generation. We're the baby boomers of the baby boomers. So from 1980 to 1995, for the 1980s babies to some of the 1990s babies, we're the biggest bubble. You know, we're the biggest block of voters. And theoretically, democracy, we should have been able to get our rights. We should be able to stand up and got what we wanted. But we never did that. So the generation between 1980 and 1995, we're the baby boomers or the baby boomers. We outnumber the baby boomers. We're bigger than them. We're, you know, we're uh, um, Generation X, right, and then Generation Y. But Generation X is actually bigger. So um, the baby boomers knew that if we ever turned our eyes towards political reform that we could change the world. They tried to keep us seated in vapid television shows and vapid music. They cut off the education. They fed us ba brain candy. Right, with all the Ritalin and all the fucking Prozac, they took away the music, never gave us, or they took away our hip hop and they give us top ten pop stations. They cut off the art, they replaced it with endless reality shows for us to plug into, hoping we would sit quietly as they ran the world. And we as a society are only really strong as our weakest link. We need to give them hell. We need to give them hell. We can win this thing. We have the numbers, we have the support, we have the whole world cheering us on. The whole world is showing us what we need to do. And yet we continue to fail, you know, in our endeavors. So none of this, um, this is all a precursor to the Kentucky statistics. I compiled a whole bunch of Kentucky stats together. I probably won't be able to get any on this video, but there's more coming up. Um, so for, for now, what we're looking at here is, uh, so Kentucky rankings, right? Kentucky kicks ass. Woo, Kentucky kicks ass. So... Um, I compiled all this in November 2013. Uh, Kentucky Governor Steve Beshears championed Obamacare at the same time. You got uh, Kentucky Senators Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul who shut the government down over the uh, our president's signature piece of legislation. The Republicans are obstructionists. They just want Obama to fail when the economy crashes. up blame it on Obama because they think Kentucky people are stupid. And when it comes to the Kentucky adults, they're right. The Kentucky adults are stupid. Okay, so we have uh, the Mitch McConnell and Rand Paul. They shut the government down over Obamacare while our governor is saying we need to get it. And actually, we are being held up as a hallmark and as an example to the rest of the country of what needs to happen for us to have successful health insurance. I just got my health insurance in the mail, my passport plan, and my God, that, it feels awesome. I'm going to get me a checkup. There's a dental care. There's, you know, emergency room care. So, like, basically, I'm not going to lose my ass if I need to get some health insurance. I got $28,000 right now in medical bills because of the LMPD beating the shit out of me because I want to take a walk to the store one day. So that's, you know, $28,000 just, you know, just for taking a step out and going to the hospital because of it, but now I have health insurance. I won't lose my entire house if the fucking cops get all shitty with me again. I won't lose everything I got 
because I got health insurance. I'd go to the fucking dentist. That'd be nice. You know, we were like our statistics are one of the worst in um in all Kentucky when it comes to dental work. So six. 640,000 people in Kentucky have no health insurance. So over half a million of Kentucky's 4 million people have no health insurance. we got a huge block of poor fucking people. White, mostly white, and some black. So uh, that's that we have lots of fucking people that's on the doles that don't, or are not on the doles, but they have no health insurance. And you don't think, you think a bunch of poor people going to the emergency room is a good thing? You think a bunch of sick workers and sick people out in this world is a good thing? That doesn't, that's bad. I even hear AIDS and HIV is on the rise. So, you know, maybe we need to get ourselves educated so our kids ain't getting fucking HIV and AIDS.